Hey you guys, it's been a while. I wanted to just give you a little bit of an update as to what was going on for the past several weeks, or I guess since uh, New Year's, um, and uh, keep you up to date. Thank you so much for reaching out, seeing, are you okay? What's going on? So the last video I posted was um, about it was a, from a few months ago when the seller had backed out the first time. So there was a lot of disappointment and then behind the scenes what was happening was that we were actually going forward with the uh, sale. We were um, getting a contract drawn up. I had a home inspector go and look at the property. I had an attorney spent a lot of time revising the contract and it really seemed like things were moving forward. And then um, the seller, it seemed like she was stalling. She didn't want to accept my down payment. Um, and then it got to the point where she was uh, not agreeing with the price that we had come to terms with um, because I told her that I'm fine. That's the cat. I don't know if you could hear that something just fell. So I told her I was fine with the price but that I was gonna have extensive roof work to do because the, the whole roof basically needed to be replaced and some support beam, well all the support beams because they were wood and there was some dry rot. So somehow she turned that into you know uh, just because you want to replace the roof and just kind of not logical stuff. Anyway, she decided, uh, you know, that we we need to rethink this whole thing. Um, around, I guess around that same time, um, we had a really big tragedy uh, in the Coronado area. The, um, the island Contadora, where my friend Suzanne and I had been, um, and flown over with Alan and uh, a couple of other people and stayed at the, the bed and breakfast. Uh, well, there was a group of people who went over and on the way back, the plane had engine trouble and, um, and crashed into the ocean. They didn't have time to deploy a lifeboat. Um, and two people didn't survive. Um, one was Deb and one was Sue. And I knew Deb just as a casual acquaintance. I'd met she and her husband, Tony, um, very vibrant couple, full of life, full of um, laughter, joy. Uh, and they genuinely seemed like, you know, a happily married long-term couple, which I guess is, kind of um, rare and uh, it just really gripped my heart. Life is so precious and it really isn't promised. We're never promised tomorrow. We're not promised the next moment. It really struck me that she doesn't get to enjoy this beautiful earth experience anymore. Um, the breezes, the sunshine, the clouds going by, all those beautiful sensory pleasures, all her friends, her family, and it really just landed heavy on my heart. Um, after that, I personally kind of felt like I've got to go, be, do, everything, right? Like soak it all up. just say yes to everything and, and get out there and socialize and you know and just be like a sponge and absorb everything of life that I can and then I got exhausted <laughs> uh, because I am an introvert by nature and I do need my downtime I need and I need my solitude I mean that's how I recharge I don't have any energy if I'm constantly around um, people and stimulation and noises like I need just 
some peace. So I guess that's where I am now. Um, back to looking for a house, not overdoing it with socializing, and just holding Deb and Sue and their families and loved ones in my in my heart. This is the love of my life, one of them, who I named Feather, um, and she's in heat right now, so getting her spayed tomorrow. The sad thing is that I might not be able to keep Feather. So there had been a man that came forward to say that the little kitten was his and that he was looking for her. So through a bunch of translation, because my Spanish isn't good enough to talk about a cat, and uh, so I was in contact with the owners of the house where I'm house sitting and the gardener, and um, the man, it, it took like three days for me to hear back because I had messaged uh, the gardener, can you ask him if I can keep the cat? So for three days I had to kind of detach, like, all right, maybe he wants her back, and you know, I feel like I could give her a better life, but that's my opinion, it doesn't make it right. Um, lots of, you know, ethical and moral things swirling around in my mind, being a, uh, from a Western perspective, and things can be very different in another country. Um, Anyway, through translation, it was so sweet. The translation came back, the cat can have her. And I think that's kind of the way that it is with pets anyway, right? They have us. We don't really have them. So today I'm bringing over a little thank you bag of some Christmas treats for the man. Um, uh, and uh, just to, you know, for allowing me to have his kitten so and uh, she's right now with a her foster mom in El Valle and I'm in Syrah you're having surgery today no breakfast first we're walking to the clinic where Feather is gonna get spayed I have to say, it's the most interesting walkway. Cool plants. Look at this. Ah, oh, that's a lantana. Her spay surgery was $15, and she got the good drugs. It has been a long time since I've had one of these cat toys. The cat dancer. And uh, Feather's going to get her cone of shame off today, get her stitches out, and uh, then we're going to come back and play! 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 I had been thinking about what to name her. What to name her, what to name her, what to name her. And Feather had popped up on my radar, but I wasn't really sure. Then I got my mattress delivered, and what did it have? all over it as a texture, feathers. For the rest of this video, I just want to share some of the most beautiful places that I really appreciate in Panama. This is in Manglarito, and it's just beautiful water to swim in. And if you hike down to the bottom, that's where the waterfall is that You've seen in some of my other videos and this time I didn't actually hike all the way down to the bottom because it was kind of rainy and muddy and slippery 
but this water felt amazing. The nature is just incredible to take in. And I would encourage you all to have those moments of reverence and appreciation for the beauty that surrounds us each day. My friend Connie and I had tried to find this waterfall called La Nativa. It's up the road from the waterfall in Manglarito. And we were driving in my car and got to a point where the road was just too steep. So we turned around. This time I pulled over and a Toyota Hilux happened to be driving by. And I stopped the man and I asked him, uh, Donde esta... Um, La Cascada Nativa and he had his wife and daughter in the car and gestured for me to come into the car and it was his uh, father I believe whose property you have access to walk through to get to the waterfall so I wouldn't be able to drive there on my own but I could go again and park where I parked and then walk and I think you pay three dollars and walk down pretty rocky and steep but this place is jaw-dropping stunning I think I went on a weekday I had the entire place to myself I didn't see one other person for the whole time that I was there and there was a rock positioned in a perfect way to just lean up against on my back and I just sat at the foot of this waterfall and took in all that beautiful energy, abundance, prosperity and I just felt so grateful to live in such a beautiful country. for hikes is a lot like life itself, isn't it? You have to watch where you're going. You need to pay attention to your surroundings. You definitely want to take in the beauty that's around you. You want to enjoy the journey and not just be focused on the destination. And sometimes we travel with other people. Sometimes we go alone. And both are necessary and enjoyable. At the end of a steep climb, we have a beautiful vista that we can take in and appreciate. And appreciate the muscle, the legwork that it took to get there. And to just keep putting one foot in front of the other. If there's something in your heart that you want to do that you've been longing for, the time is now 